train, for its type, is the most powerful vehicle on land. And the engines of Sodor are the power behind the docks, industries and branch lines that make up the world-renowned North Western Railway. These are the stories of Sodor. Every business, big or small, has its risks. My driver told me that once, just after we'd heard about Diesel's accident outside Wellsworth. While I never saw it, I can be certain of two things. The numberless MIDI groaned constantly about his predicament, and Mickey was listening patiently the entire time. Mickey belonged to the Fire and Rescue Service, essentially the fire brigade of the railway. Whenever there was an accident or a breakdown, the chief would be there in a jiff, ready to take the distress engine to the works if necessary. And in the event of a trackside fire, Mickey and his water trucks would respond with all due haste. Mickey was widely respected by both Middies and Nor'easters, as he belonged to neither. He was independent, charged with helping any engine who needed it, regardless of their livery. There were times he could be a little gruff, however, as he took his responsibility very seriously, often giving ponderous lectures to those of us who had mishaps. But who could really blame him? After all, he was largely the reason why Sodor's railways were so safe to travel, with just about every engine having need his help at least once. It all started with Thomas puffing down the Farquhar branch with Annie and Clarabel in tow. He was just passing the old mill when he spotted smoke in the distance and feared the worst. Oh no! Thundering towards the black pillar, he was relieved to find Mickey already at the scene. All right, good work there, lads. Ah, Thomas, just in time to witness a successful drill. A drill? Oh, that's a relief. I thought it was the real thing. Ha <laughs> ha, even if it was, this motley crew would have it good and sorted in no time. Isn't that right, lads? Yes, yes sir. sir. So, what are you up to, Thomas? Sounds like Annie and Clarabelle are mighty full. Oh, we are, Chief. Aren't we, Clarabelle? Indeed, Annie, fit to burst. <laughs> the way you two carry on sometimes, you think you weren't built for carrying passengers. Oh, you can be so thoughtless sometimes, Thomas. <laughs> yes, they are, fool. I'm taking a load of workers to the new harbour being built near Ellsbridge. Oh, how's that going? <laughs> Top, since we don't have to deal with the middies. <laughs> oh, you companies and your rivalries. Well, I better get going. Nice work, Chief. Stay safe, Thomas. Ellsbridge Harbour was a project conceived under the Sodor Construction Scheme, a government initiative aimed at creating jobs for the depression-wracked island, which it did especially for us nor'easters. I must say it didn't take long for this place to take shape. That it didn't, dear Percy. It always amazes me how quickly they build things these days. You're certainly right about that. I can remember how it took two years for the main line to be extended all the way to Arsborough. At the time, we thought that was fast. When do you think this place will be open for business? Soon. They need to do some serious dredging to allow for deep-drawed ships to approach first. They'll be starting on that as soon as Thomas gets here. Speak the devil's name and he appears. Ah, Thomas, so good of you to come. Yeah, sorry I'm a little late. Got held up with Mickey in the fire drill he was conducting. Ah, that Mickey, we would be lost without him. You're certainly right about that. Leave Annie and Clarabel, Thomas. There's a line of trucks next to the station. Could you bring them over here, please? No worries. Hang on, wasn't James meant to be here? An hour ago, yes. I don't know what's keeping him. Perhaps he wouldn't leave the shed without a six coat of polish. Only six? He must be cutting back then. <laughs> <laughs> but as it turns out, it wasn't James's vanity causing delays, but rather the turntable he needed to use to get out of Carlton Yard. It had jammed while it was being aligned to his siding. While the workmen struggled to repair it, our number five was fuming. Oh, this is ridiculous. Take it easy there, James. How can I possibly take it easy when I'm running late? Mr. Starr is going to have a fit. He can't possibly blame you for this. <laughs> Don't be so sure. James couldn't get on the turntable fast enough when it was finally fixed, but he would suffer another delay 
as Douglas was using the very track he needed to access his train. Oh, you've got to be kidding me. Hey, Douglas, hurry it up. Don't get snippy with me, James. I've got me own work to worry about. Well, do it quickly. I'm running late. That's not my problem. Not yet, it isn't. Oh, you want to be like that, do you? You smarmy little... Oh, that's gone and done it. Well done, you idiot. If I didn't already know you were incompetent, I'd think you did that on purpose. Oh, yes, that's exactly right. I jeopardise my record just to inconvenience you. Hear that, lads? Dougie's a saboteur. Shut it, you lot. I'm in no mood for your lip. Good thing I still have plenty to give. That doesn't surprise me in the slightest. It took a bit of fisking around before James was finally able to back down onto his train, as Douglas's derailed trucks didn't block off the siding he needed to get to. What are you smirking at? Oh, I just realised there's a silver lining to all this. Oh, aye, and what would that be? That you have to explain this to Mickey. Have fun! Savouring his rival's misfortune another moment, James set off as fast as he could. Our number five tore down the main line at a fantastic speed. Dare I say, he gave Gordon a run for his money, appearing as a crimson blur to all those he passed. I'm sorry to say this fantastic speed was what led to the incident. He was going so fast that the axle box on one of his trucks started to overheat and spark. In the darkness of the tunnel, the guard noticed this and threw on the brakes. Oh, what now? After inspecting the truck, the guard reported his findings to James and his crew. In his opinion, they could still go on, but they would have to do so at a very slow pace or risk damaging the truck further. This entire day has been an absolute joke! There's nothing for it, James. Either we move slowly or we wait until the axle is cooled. Since he was already running so late, James opted for the former option. Of course, he had no way of knowing that, at the other end of the tunnel, an errant spark from his truck had landed in some dry brush and was already starting to simmer. What do you make of this Hitler bloke? Don't know. I gotta say, his rise through the German government boggles the mind, and his popularity? Crikey, even the Kaiser didn't have that kind of loyalty. I heard he's looking to undo the Treaty of Versailles. <laughs> I don't see why. The Germans started the Great War. They should have been made to pay for it. I was built long after that war, Thomas. I've heard nothing but bad things about it. I was around during it, Percy. Even so, without having actually been to Europe, I'll never know just how brutal it was. But the men who were there all say the same thing. It was the war to end all wars. <laughs> um... Sorry, sorry to change the topic so suddenly, Thomas, but look over there! Oh, this is too easy! Crikey, James! No wonder you're late! You're giving new meaning to the term slow goods! Oh, don't start, Thomas! I am not in the mood! All right, all right, no need to bite his smoke box off! I was only joking, mate! <sighs> I'm sorry, it's just been a rough day. How so? Blimey, what do you think that was about? If it involved Mickey, his water trucks, and his siren, I got a pretty good idea. Yes, it was indeed the fire caused by James's sparking truck, which was quickly spreading. Fortunately, Lily happened to be nearby to raise the alarm, with Mickey arriving in short order. Thank goodness you're here, Chief. That fire is quickly spreading. Damaged power pole, I see. A soda or electrical been notified. Yes, sir, and they've shut off the power. All right, lads. Go to work! Like they had practiced a hundred times before, the firemen spilled out of the works coach and took hold of the hoses bolted to the underside of the water trucks. Like the well-oiled machine they were, they set to work dousing the flames. The fire was quickly extinguished, leaving behind nothing but scorched earth. Good work, lads. Top form as always. Now, to find out how this happened. The nearby signalman was called in as a witness. While he didn't outright accuse James of having any involvement, he did let it slip just how fast our number five had ripped past his signal box. I'm sorry to say that put him at the top of Mickey's suspect list. I wouldn't want to be James right now. 
Mickey was quick to catch up to James, and after a discussion with our number five's guard, the cause of the blaze became apparent. Well, what have you got to say for yourself? Chief, I'm sorry, but I was running late, and... Running late? James, a schedule is no excuse to compromise on safety. Mr. Starr really doesn't like it when we're late. And you think he likes it when his engines start fires? Mr. Starr? I... Um... Uh... I can't believe it, James. I simply can't. How could you let this happen? Sir, with all due respect, you're always telling us how important it is we keep to our schedules. James, that day Edward was late. What was his reason? A broken down lorry, sir. Was that his fault? No, sir. And it wasn't your fault the turntable at Carlton jammed or that Douglas's trucks became derailed. Those setbacks were well beyond your control, and I'd be a fool if I blamed you for them. <sighs> I'm sorry, sir. Mr. Sir, James's actions have caused severe damage to the power grid. All of Lower Napa is likely to remain dark until we can replace that pole. I've already spoken to Sodor Electrical Chief. We'll be covering the cost of the repairs. In order to pay for this, the rest of you will have to take on extra jobs. What about the payment for the harbour contract, sir? <sighs> Unfortunately, the government has been a little lax in advancing us the money. Oh, bother. I know, Thomas, but we have to deal with it. James, you'll be working at the mines until further notice. Yes, sir. <sighs> I am very disappointed in you. And so you should be. The following week was absolutely grueling for us nor'easters. James was stuck at the mines with the teasing trucks for company, while the rest of us had to undertake extra jobs on top of our own work to pay for the damage. What made it worse was that Diesel had apparently been nearby during the exchange with Mickey and Mr. Starr, meaning the rest of the Middies found out in short order and were quick to give us grief. You look quite smashing with those trucks, Gordon. Oh, be quiet! Ha ha ha! What the... Cheek... Is something wrong, Gordon? There's plenty wrong, Percy! Forcing an express engine to pull trucks. What an indignity! What a blemish on the LNER! Oh, you poor thing! Spare me the impudence, Percy. You're not the only one to suffer, you know. Me and Thomas have shunted just about every truck in the island twice over. Thomas and I. Oh, whatever. Where is your partner in cheek, anyway? I think he's at Wellsworth. Thomas was indeed at Wellsworth Yard, which had been upgraded as part of the Sodor construction scheme, but not by us. Okay, almost there. Just one last... Ah. Uh, whew. Finally. Now I can catch my breath. Hello, Thomas. Oh, bother. I don't think he's happy to see us, Diesel. I think you're right, Colin. Look, I've had a hard week. Last thing I need is for you two to give me grief. All I said was hello. No need to get all fired up. Ha ha ha. I don't get it. Oh, shut up. So, what do you think of the yard, Thomas? A thing of beauty, ain't it? All made possible by the superiority of the LMS. Your mob did this? Oh, that explains why half the points didn't work at first. Oh, yeah? Well, ah, forget it. I ain't wasting the effort on you. Come on, Colin. We're out of here. All right, Diesel. Let's... Uh -huh. Uh, it's you! Oh, excuse me. I told you to get your smoke box cleaned out. It is now good and empty. <laughs> that was a given beforehand. <laughs> Bow up, Thomas. Come on, Colin. Let's leave this member of the Firebug Brigade to his work. Firebug, eh? Let me tell you. Wait, stop. Oh, uh, yeah? Why should I? Because your trucks are on fire. What? Oh, bother. We need to do something before the shed goes up. Don't worry, Diesel. I'll push the train out. God, don't! Uh, whoops. Nice one, dummy. We'll probably lose the whole train now. It's worse than that. There are two tar wagons back there. If they go up, half the yard will go with it. Uh, what do we do? I know what I'm doing. As fast as they could, the three engines retreated to the far side of the yard, the fire quickly spreading along the train. Reaching a safe distance, the workmen followed suit. But after the foreman did a head count, he discovered a problem. Wait! Where's Cooper? I last saw him near the water tower. Bother! We have to go back and look for him! Are you nuts? It's too dangerous! Fine! I'll go back and look for him. You stay here where it's good and safe. I will! And if you get blown up, don't expect me to cry for you! Me. Look at that! Help! Help! There he is! We'll get him! Uh, 
All right, Thomas, let's get out of here. Gladly. Ow! Oh, bother! Richard, safety valve! Gavin? John? If you tell us to leave you, Thomas, I'm going to belt you with me shovel. Look, I can't move, and don't worry, I got you. Colin? You're actually helping me? Of course. Right, let's go. Uh, I must be the only sensible engine on this island. Come on, you two, get out of the way. Careful, Chief, there are tar wagons in that shed. Right, thanks, Thomas. Glad that's over. That could have ended very badly, and it wouldn't have happened at all if not for the actions of a certain dim-witted tank engine. Don't worry about it, Colin. You were trying to do the right thing. Thanks for helping me. You're welcome. After he was done at Wellsworth, Mickey delivered Thomas to the works at Croven's Gate. In the nearby transfer yard, Percy Scarlowy and I had been working and were expectedly surprised to see him. I say, Thomas, are you alright? Yeah, I'm fine. Just a burst safety valve. How did that happen? Thomas overdid himself trying to save a workman from a fire at Wellsworth, which I am not proud of. Come again, Chief? Your actions, Thomas, while well-intentioned, were nonetheless reckless. What was I supposed to do? Just leave Cooper? Ideally, no. But self-preservation exists for a reason. To make us think before acting foolish. Did it ever cross your mind that I could have been delayed? Or that those tar wagons could have gone up at any moment? If they had... You might be a charred husk by now. I did make it, Chief, and that's only because Colin was willing to help you, which is another reason why your actions were foolish. You endangered others. Let's not forget about your crew. <sighs> Point taken, Chief. Good. However, it'd be cruel of me not to commend you for your bravery. Well done. Hear, hear, Chief. Thanks, Edward. It was almost a month before the repairs were completed at Wellsworth, with the middies footing the bill, which is something I'm sure Mr. Sorrow wasn't too thrilled about. Not long afterwards, Mickey gave both sides a long, dull lecture on fire safety. But something he said that day must have stuck, as it was a good long time before another fire happened on Sodor. At least one that was the fault of an engine. But that's a story for another day. <laughs>